Hey folks, this is the Elevator Simulator speaking. I usually play a video game at this point while I make some moderately entertaining comments. Today, however, I won't. And the reason for this is that Google happened to me. More precisely, when I was trying to upload the next video of my Woodruff and the Schnibble Let's Play today, I was receiving a vague and strange error message after the video was done with processing. Invalid request. This video was rejected, it said. This message being a bit useless, I looked online what it could possibly mean. As it turns out, my video was rejected because it was some 30 seconds longer than 15 minutes. You may think now, well, isn't that totally obvious? And of course, when I registered on YouTube, I was well aware of the fact that videos have to be under 15 minutes long. I was also aware that YouTube grants people an exception to this rule under certain circumstances. I figured that as a YouTube newbie that has monetization and ads disabled on top of that, I would not be granted this privilege. However, to my great surprise, I noticed that I didn't seem to be subjected to the 15 minute time limit when I uploaded episode 9 of my Kingpin Let's Play. Since then, I have uploaded about 20 more videos longer than 15 minutes. With my one year anniversary video, I was even able to upload videos of almost one hour length. But now, all of a sudden this seems to have changed. It appears that I can no longer post videos longer than 15 minutes. I have no idea why this has happened, nor did I have any indication that this change was about to happen. I never received any copyright claims since my Kingplane Let's Play, and I didn't get into trouble with YouTube in any other way. Perhaps my fault was that I used some anonymization software, i.e. Tor, to access YouTube. I do that because I don't want YouTube to know my location, because then videos would be associated with that particular geographic region. As I already explained in some other video, my videos are intended for a global audience. That's also the reason why I do all my Let's Plays in English, even though I sometimes struggle with it. Maybe that has something to do with it, but I don't know. And therein lies the problem that I want to address in this video. I don't know. I was granted a certain privilege for reasons unknown to me, and then that same privilege was revoked, again for reasons unknown to me. Well, what do you call a society that is based on privileges, as opposed to rights, and arbitrary powers, as opposed to powers restrained by public laws? Feudalistic, maybe? The point that I want to make in this video is that this event, unimportant as it may be in itself, is a symptom of a larger development that I would like to call the feudalization of the Internet. Some of you may think now, aren't you blowing this out of proportion? What's the big deal? Now we have to keep your benign gaming videos under 15 minutes, so what? And if YouTube didn't inform you about that change, that's okay. They don't have to. They pay for the bandwidth and the disk space that is being used. They are free to do whatever they want. And I would basically agree with you. Except maybe that, of course, they aren't totally free to do what they want. I mean, providing their services, even if they are free of charge, they still have some responsibility. If, for example, they would suddenly delete your account with no explanation, that might be something you could challenge in a court, I think. Especially if that account provides a means of income to you. Now, before I come back to the point I want to make about the meaning of this incident from a bigger perspective, let's talk about what that means for my channel. First of all, it means that recording videos has now become a lot more inconvenient for me. Whereas before, I was only roughly aiming for 15 minutes with my videos, I now have to be absolutely strict. But that's not always possible, as you sometimes enter along cutscenes toward the end of a video or something else happens in the game that makes you transgress your time limit. So I will probably have to cut up some episodes into several videos, again, making recording let's plays more cumbersome and ultimately less enjoyable for me. I might even stop recording Let's Plays. This would be a pity since I really enjoy this hobby. I'm not decided yet, however, this is for future to tell. Regarding the near future, let me assure you that I will complete both of my current Let's Plays. There are even some episodes already recorded that are just waiting to be uploaded. They should appear starting next week. I now want to come back to the point that I was trying to make earlier. First of all, what do I mean by feudalization of the internet exactly? By this I mean the transformation the internet has undergone since the start of the new millennium, 
associated with buzzwords like Web 2.0. This transformation can be put into an analogy with the development of society itself. The structure of the early internet was comparable to that of a settlement of a lot of individuals, where property was evenly distributed and communication was free. They even named the internet the global village back then. In this analogy, individual of course translates into computer with an IP and property into content. Communication was indeed almost absolutely free, even though that's hard to believe right now. You could put anything you wanted on your website, from pirated games and extreme pornography to instructions for making bombs, and there were a few means for other people to censor you. That of course has radically changed now, thanks to the influence of commercial interests and governments. The structure of the internet is now less that of a village, it has more the shape of a feudalistic state. In this state, individuals are no longer equal and independent. They are lords and vessels, the lords granting their vessels a thief, which then become dependent upon the lord and subject to his despotism. In this analogy, lords correspond to big commercial websites, whereas vessel translates into user, of course. An example of Lord Google, this thief would be the provided ability to upload videos. The disk space being used at Google servers being literally the land given to the vessel. And the views generated by the video are the harvest that is being reaped from that land. You may object to this analogy. You may say that you are still free to simply not participate. But that's easier said than done. For the same reason a person living in the middle age couldn't just say no to feudalism. Human beings generally just can't live in isolation. They need other people to interact and communicate. In short, there needs to be a public space. And as a matter of fact, a lot of public space on the internet is owned by private companies. If you want to interact with other people, you're often left with no choice but to go along. Is that a problem? For that matter, was medieval feudalism a problem? Well, obviously, feudalism wasn't the best form of society ever conceived, or otherwise some of us would not be living in democracies right now. The obvious problem of such a form of society is of course the social inequality and dependence being created. This dependence and inequality means that the Lord can rule over their vessels arbitrarily, the vessels lacking basically any rights and protection by law. In much the same way, the big internet companies often have a system of privileges, Google being a big offender there. The word privilege comes from the Latin word privilegium, which is the composite of privus, which means individual, and legis, which translates into law. Literally, privilege therefore means private law. As opposed to a public law, a private law or privilege only applies to certain individuals. It may even be unknown to the person subjected to it, and it may be revoked at any time. An innocent everyday example of a private law would be house rules in a private club. But YouTube or any other of the big sites on the web hardly qualify as private clubs. They are de facto public spaces. Yet, as my case illustrates, they do have secret house rules. So a big part of the public cyberspace is now subjected to private laws. But it might not stop there. In fact, the so-called TTIP, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, proposes to establish secret courts that can be invoked by private companies if they feel that the public legislation in one of the TTIP signy countries diminishes their profit. But already secret laws are in effect, thanks to the aftermath of September 11. Just this year it has become public that there is a secret terror trial in the UK whose very existence was kept secret by order of the Crown. Okay, so shit sucks. Now, what are we going to do about it? Thinking back of the analogy with societies, I think there are two possibilities. The first possibility would be that we go back to the roots, so to speak, into an anarcho-democratic society. That would mean decentralization using peer-to-peer -peer technology and cryptography. There are already some projects trying to do that for YouTube, for instance, Media Goblin and Bit451, the latter are looking especially promising. This may or not be sufficient, however. Another way to react to this development would be to 
democratize the Internet. This would mean to acknowledge, first of all, that the services provided by the big companies such as Google and Facebook are de facto public services and to restrain their power through public regulation. Perhaps we don't need either one but both of these responses. But whatever the right answer is, it's clear into which direction the Internet will evolve if we don't take action. So if you've made it until this point, let me ask you a favor. Please think about this problem. Discuss it with your friends, real life or virtual. We need to raise awareness. This was the Elevator Simulator speaking. Thanks for listening and take care.